Please go to elithecomputerguy.com and failednormal.com to see the videos that are too dangerous for YouTube. Welcome back. So in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a visual alert system to say whether the internet is up or the internet is down. So imagine if you're in the help desk world, if you're in the desktop support world, and you get the call and somebody's saying, the internet's down, the internet's down. And a big question is, is the internet down or is the user being a moron? Wouldn't it be nice to just have a visual system so that your users in your environment, if they're having a problem, they can look up. If an LED light is green, they know it's most likely their problem. The internet isn't actually down. And if the, the LED light is red, then they know, oh yeah, the internet is probably down, right? They go to Salesforce. When they go to Salesforce, are they not getting to Salesforce because they just installed some stupid ass new plugin in Firefox? Uh, or can they not get to Salesforce because the internet connection is simply disconnected? So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using our Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. So this is going to connect to our wireless network. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simply connect just connect to google.com. So we're going to go, go to google.com at port 80, and we're going to see whether this Arduino Uno Wi-Fi can connect to google.com at port 80. If it can, then it means you have an internet connection all the way to Google, google.com, and so therefore it's not an internet problem. If you can't connect, then you know that there's probably an issue along the way. Now, to be clear, again, when you're doing troubleshooting, just because you can get an I to an IP address, it doesn't mean the service or platform is doing what the hell it's supposed to do, but this is just one of those simple troubleshooting tools that you can have so that everybody can be on board, everybody can be on the same page, right? If you have a little cubicle farm, all the people in cubicle farm, they can look up and go, oh, the, the internet light is red, it's time to go on a coffee break. Again, this is one of those important things to be thinking about in the real operations world, in the real IT world, is giving people tools so they know how to respond appropriately. So imagine you have a cubicle farm, people are working, 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 and then all the all of a sudden the internet does, doesn't seem to be working right, right? You know, one of their questions is, do I sit at my desk and do stupid things, or is this time for a coffee break? Is this time for a potty break? Is this time to, I don't know, call the babysitter and make sure the babysitter knows to knows to, to come at the appropriate time tonight, right? So if they can look up, if they can look up and visually say, see, oh, the internet is down, okay, I'm gonna go to the bathroom right now while the IT folks fix it, right? Not only does that make them feel more comfortable, but it allows them to start, start doing things that are appropriate for the current situation. Situation. So with that, let's go over to the workbench. I'll show you how to build this little thing. This is literally all there is. <laughs> Basically not a whole lot to it. And then I will show you the code and then I'll show you uh, how it works uh, when it all comes together. So this project, like most of these kind of notification alert system projects, actually doesn't have a whole hell of a lot to it. Again, we have our Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi here, and then basically all we've got uh, for hardware otherwise are the two LEDs. We have a green LED, a red LED, of course we have the 220 ohm resistors so we don't blow out these LEDs. Then what we have is we have the green LED, we have digital pin number 9 is going for the positive to power the green LED, digital pin number 10 is going to the red LED on, power, uh, on positive. Uh, then for ground, since all we all we have for this particular project is simply two LEDs, um, I'm just running the ground wires back to the two the two ground connectors on the Arduino board itself. So we don't need to make this any more complicated than it has to be. And so this is all that's required um, in order to make this work. Now again, uh, since this shows with the LEDs. We can connect this to an external power supply and not have this connected to the computer at all. Um, so we can connect this again to like something like a battery pack or just connect this to a wall outlet. Today, I will be use, uh, connecting directly to the computer because we will also be using the serial monitor to see what the output from the serial monitor is and see how that corresponds to these LEDs. But do realize with this project, this is one of those projects that you can separate off and have completely disconnected from a computer. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code. 
So here's the code that we're looking at today. So this is relatively simple code. There's not a lot here, uh, but it is important that you understand all the different components of it. There are some, a uh, couple of, I wouldn't really say tricky things, but things that if you if you mess up could cause you problems. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, include the Wi-Fi library. So we have the Wi-Fi 9.0.h uh, library included here. Then we're going to have the two LEDs, the green LED and the red LED. So we're going to have Google on online LED. So this will be the green LED that's going to connect to digital pen at nine, then the Google offline LED at the red LED, and that is going to go to digital pen 10. Uh, then we have uh, the information that's required in order to connect to the Wi-Fi network. So we have the char SSID. So my uh, SSID is test and I do not have a password at all. So that's all that's here. Again, I leave my password blank and I keep this simple so I don't run into weird networking issues while I'm developing things. Then we're going to come down, we're gonna create a variable for status and we're going to set that uh, status value to WL idle status. So this is just simply a variable that we can determine what is the current status of the wireless link when we're trying to connect. The next thing that we're gonna do, and this is one of the important ones, is we're going to create a variable for Google. So basically, this is what we are going to be testing against. And so you can put whatever domain you want here. So I am using Google. So the reason that I use Google is I figure, again, being on the East Coast of the United States, Google should have 99.9999% uptime. So if all I'm trying to do is make sure that the inter that I the internet is working appropriately, connecting to something like Google makes sense to me. To be clear, if you are in Africa, and if you're in South America, if you are somewhere else, and you don't believe that in your area, Google has a 99% uptime, then you may want to put in a domain name here uh, that is more appropriate to situ your, your situation. I don't know, Alibaba, doc, like literally, maybe Alibaba.com, something like that. So basically, you name this, um, so the brackets remain, the brackets remain, uh, but the front part of this can change. So you could have this to Alibaba, and then it's Alibaba.com, Tencent.com, whatever you want to plug in there. Then we're going to come down uh, and we're going to create a client for the Wi-Fi client. So uh, so using the library, what we're doing here is we're, we are allowing the Arduino itself to be a client. So we're allowing this to be able to connect to another networking device. So we have Wi-Fi client uh, and then we're going to just call that a client. Uh, then we're going to come down and we are actually going to set up the environment. So we have pen mode, Google online LED output, pen mode, Google offline LED output, same thing as normal, uh, serial.begin. So we're going to be using the serial monitor here, again, to, to, to see how things correspond, the LEDs correspond to what we're actually reading out from the Arduino. This can be removed if you really want to. Uh, then down here, this is the basically the copy paste thing that we normally do for connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Network, uh, while while loop the status is not equal to connected then it's basically trying to connect then we have status equals and this is the Wi-Fi dot begin this is the function that starts that tries to start the Wi-Fi service so SSID password tries to connect delays for 10,000 milliseconds 10 seconds if it doesn't connect, it continues to loop. As soon as it does connect, it breaks out. Then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna center serial print what the SSID is. That's what this is, we see this a lot. Then we are going to uh, print out what the local IP address is. So again, this, this may be important for you to know what the local IP address is. So that's what we're printing out here. But then one of the important things that I've added, because again, we're doing network troubleshooting, network troubleshooting, there's a lot of stuff involved in the network right now. Um, and so one of the big problems you may run into is your default gateway, right? Your default gateway is what should be connecting you to the internet. So especially with DHCP, somebody goes in, somebody is really stupid, screws up your DHCP scope, or you know mucks around with uh, the default gateway by accident, you may be providing the incorrect default gateway to your DHCP clients, and that's why you're able to get to the internet. So again, that's where you gotta, gotta be careful. 
It's not that the internet doesn't work, it's that somebody fat fingered the number for the default gateway, the, the incorrect default gateway is being provided and that's causing the, the communication issue. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna say IP address. So this is a, a, a type of variable and we're going to call it gateway and we're going to make gateway equal to Wi-Fi.gateway IP. And this is going to read what the default gateway that your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi has been provided. So we go down here, it's going to print out the IP address and then it's going to print out the default gateway. Cause again, you don't know how many times I've seen, always somebody, always somebody else did it. Some, I, I swear, somebody else always does it, but somebody goes in, they're doing something with a DHCP scope. They do something really stupid for some reason. Um, and the default gateway gets screwed up. And again, the internet isn't down. It's just default gateway is the incorrect configuration. So we're going to have that there. And again, this can also show you, this may show you what the router is or the modem is, so you can go and troubleshoot that if you need to. Then we're gonna come down and we're gonna get into the loop. And as we can see, the loop is incredibly short here. So what we're gonna do here, if, then we're going to do is client. So client, this is what was created up here. So you have to create that up here. So if client.connect, so we're trying to connect to Google. So Google, if we go up here, this is the variable for Google. So it's gonna be reading from this. So whatever you've plugged in here, that's, that's what it's actually reading, it's the value. So what is the value of Google at port 80? So it's going to try to connect to the value of Google at port 80. If it does connect, then we're gonna do serial.print. Google is online. So this is static text. And then what we're gonna do here is serial.print line client.remote IP. So this is kind of cool. So what this does is this is going to then print out what the IP address of Google that you're getting back is. Again, this can be useful for troubleshooting. You know, again, DNS gets mucked up. Again, especially like with uh, larger enterprises where you can actually administer your own uh, DNS. Sometimes somebody fat fingers the DNS. And again, it's not that Google is down, it's that the IP address uh, so you can run into problems. Anyway, so this gives what the, the remote IP address is. Then we're going to say is digital right. Google online LED is high. So if it is able to connect, then it's going to be uh, that's going to turn the green light on digital right Google offline LED low. And so that's going to uh, turn the uh, the red light off. So the green light will be on red light is off else. So if it basically if it can't connect, if this is not actually working, uh, then it's going to serial dot print line, Google is offline, then it's going to turn the green LED off, and it's going to turn the red LED on. And then it's going to delay for 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. And that's really all we have with the code here, it'll go through it'll loop. And again, if, if it can connect to the value of this, Again, this is up here at port 80, then all of this will run. You'll get the remote IP, the green light will turn on, so on and so forth. Else, if not, you'll get Google is offline, the red LED will turn on. So with that, um, let's, uh, let's see this thing in action. So we have our Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. We're going to now connect this uh, to our computer. So this will give the power and allow us to access the serial monitor. We then go to the computer, we go to tools, we go to serial monitor, and we can see it's attempting to connect to a network named test. So right now, no lights are on as it's trying to connect. Then we're gonna wait, this is gonna take, uh, like I said, right around 10 seconds or so. Okay, then this is the, the information we have now. So we have the SSID of test, we have the IP address, so this is the IP address of our, our Arduino device, and then the default gateway of our Arduino device. Again, this can be this can be a big problem, right? If that default gateway is misconfigured, then it's not about Verizon, it's not about Comcast, it's about somebody in your side uh, being fat fingered. Then past that, we see Google is online and it's online at that remote IP address of 172.217.164.142. And we can see that the LED is green. So that's great. So now what I'm gonna do is I, I actually have a, uh, a a connection to, to the network down here in my basement. So I am literally going to run over now. I'm going to run over. I'm going to disconnect the uh, the network cable and we're gonna see what's gonna happen. So I'm running over, I'm running over, I'm running over. I have now dis disconnected the hardwired connection to the internet. And so now we're gonna wait a second 
and it's going through and one of the weird issues you're going to get is although you have that delay of 2000 milliseconds there's also like a time out so right now the hardwire connection is completely disconnected but why it's taking a little bit longer it'll take like up to 30 seconds initially because it goes through this whole timeout process basically it's trying to connect and okay so now we have the red led and we see that google is offline so now i'm going to run back run 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 so i'm here i have now connected the hardwire connection back to the internet so we come back, we can now see Google is online and we can see the light is green. So that is how this thing works in the real world. Literally when I, when I yank the cable, um, it shows that Google is offline and you get the red light. As soon as you plug the cable back in, well, <laughs> within a few seconds, within a number of seconds, you can see that it's back online. The green LED is lit. And so, uh, so there you go. This is how this project works. So that's a simple project uh, that you can use in Arduino Uno Wi-Fi in order to create a visual alert system for whether the internet is, is, is up or whether the internet is down. This is one of those great things. Again, when you're dealing with end users that are already stupid as rocks to begin with, right? Giving them little things like this just makes your life a lot easier. Because again, if they're sitting there and having problems, if they look up and see the lights red, then they know there is a larger issue going on. If they look up and they see the lights green, eh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll reboot their computer before they call you. Maybe. The other reason that this can be useful is, again, just for yourself, right? You know, a lot of people think with IT people that we're on the computer or on the internet all day. Somehow we go to work and for nine hours we're locked to our computer. But, you know, we're going to the bathroom too. We're grabbing cups of coffee too. We're reading books too. We're communicating with people. Again, when I was doing IT professionally, really 25% of my time was actually the technical work and 75% was everything else. And so if you have a visual alert system like this you know you put this up in your server room you put this up in your office or your cubicle this is just an easy way you know you're sitting there reading some sam's in 24-hour book or trying to figure out some arduino project you look up and all of a sudden you see the, the lights uh, lights red and you go oh crap I'm about to start getting some work orders in. Let me go try to fix this before anybody knows what's going on. So this is great for end users, so they feel more comfortable because they understand what the situation is. This is better for managers. Again, imagine if you're a manager. So in one of the companies that, that I, I worked in, we had a cubicle farm with 100 salespeople. And so when those salespeople were, were asking what should they do, if the manager can look up and they can see that the internet itself is down, the manager can say, Oh, well, hey, why doesn't everybody uh, take lunch early today while the, while the darn IT people, you know, do what the hell they're supposed to do, right? This is one of those things that can actually be really, really useful in the, in the real world. So with that, this is really, this is what really all there is to it. Again, uh, if you want to try to make this more complicated, um, you may do things like blinking, blinking uh, green lights or blinking red. Like the first, you may, you may go through like with iterations. So you may do something with like turning the green and the, the red LED on or off. So let's say when it's constantly connecting to Google, you have the light be green, but then you have a progressively longer uh, time off uh, for the, the green LED to basically make it blink if it's causing problems. So instead of immediately going from green to red, maybe you could have a middle process where the green light starts to blink if it's noticing issues and then if it continues having issues for something like a minute then it flips over to red those are kind of some of the things you can think about with adding a little bit of code there to make it a little bit more functional again with any of these projects i'm showing you things in like this classroom environment you really have to think about you know when you're going to put this out in the production environment how do you really want this to work you really want the light to flip red as me immediately uh, if it can connect to Google again in the real world there's blips maybe maybe you want to delay on that process maybe 
The first time it, it goes to, it, it can't connect to Google, we'll wait. The second time we'll wait. Again, if it times out after a minute, maybe you want it to flip over to red. That's something that, that you might want to think about a little bit, but again, you guys are the tech professional, so I'll let you figure that out. I have showed you the basic components here. So as always, I enjoyed uh, doing this video and look forward to seeing the next one.